Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 127 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And I'll do my best to answer them. Let's get right to it. First one's called One Question. Mark, I've just finished watching part two of your clues about the bird wall. I have one question. Why doesn't an expedition <clears throat> excuse me, travel in one or all of the other three directions to find the edge? And that's from Steve. And in Steve's case, hopefully he would have made it. Remember, he's only at part two when he caught this. So he will eventually get to one of the other clues where it talks about the Antarctic Treaty. And nobody is going anywhere out there. Uh, if anyone has any doubt, please, by all means, look up the Antarctic Treaty of 1959. And it will lay out in great detail why nobody except for the government and military scientists and military authorized scientists are going to Antarctica. This next one's called test. Howdy, Mark. Is this a functional email address? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. And uh, it's funny. Every time I, I get one of those, I, I have to read it because I'm trying to remind people. It's like, look, it's not like the old days where it would take you a long time to get a bounce back from an email that didn't work. Uh, nowadays, it's absolutely instantaneous. So when you send an email to somebody and it's not a working email address or whatever, you know, it will just bounce back to you. Moving on, this is called Question. Hi, Mark. Thanks for all your work. Question and no rush getting back to me. <clears throat> all right. Any idea how land works in the Southern Hemisphere? Meaning how do they have long periods of daylight similar to the Northern Hemisphere? Thanks. Corey Prawl. Uh, what can I, how can I answer this? Daylight in the Southern Hemisphere is still tricky because, yeah, of course, you know, the sun can move in and out like a, like a needle on a record player, no question. But eventually you're going to get out far enough and you're going to run into that area of 24-hour sunlight or not 24-hour sunlight. And there's two schools of thought here, and you've heard me say it many times. One, of course, is the DITRH Jaronism uh, suspicion that there is no 24-hour sunlight and that uh, the stuff they're showing us has huge gaps in, in the time, at least eight-hour gaps, which is fine. That, that's that's good in, in some ways, but I also think, because I've talked to some people that swear there were 24, you know, first person, you know, no degrees of separation that swear that there's 24-hour sunlight. So in which case it'd be like, okay, multiple light sources. Because yeah, in the northern part, otherwise known as the center of the, the map, uh, 24 hour sun is easy. That, that's super easy. But in the southern part, not so much. So which one to believe? I'm not sure. I, I just don't know. All I know is Antarctica is extremely suspicious on all fronts. This one's called Greetings. I, oh boy, I don't know if I can read this whole thing. It is way too big way too big uh if you guys are going to send me something i'm going to read it on air try not to make it longer than like a page uh it's but i'll, I'll give you the title real quick uh, it's called greetings i saw the documentary on netflix greetings mark my name is albano i'm from argentina i thought about writing you because i got a lot of ideas obviously from the size of this email watching the documentary even though i'm writing a long email i wish you can read it and maybe if you have time give me some thoughts first of all i don't think the earth is actually flat but i respect your opinion even though I don't think there's enough proof about it through logic and scientific analysis. Hmm. But I don't want to discuss the proofs right now. Oh, I doubt that. Uh, that's not the reason I've sent you the message. I believe that the actual core of that belief is more of an existential matter of who we are rather than trying to prove there's a higher conspiracy to keep us all dumb from knowing we are stuck inside a dome or a disk designed by some kind of higher form of existence. Which is not more probable than assuming God created the world in seven days. I do believe in conspiracies, though, because there they are, and denying them is actually denying the truth, but there is an elemental question I have for you, Mark. Why do you actually think proving the earth is actually flat is the way to cause a revolution? I didn't say I wanted a revolution. I just say I want people to know the truth. What they do with that truth is up to them. And yes, that is what it is all about, about the awakening of people trying to unite under a flag and fight the hegemonic domain. I don't use that word often, hegemonic. The hegemonic forces, political and economic uh, influence schools, universities and all types, shapes and forms of academic institutions. But the hegemonic influence, which is real, is terribly scary, the way more tangible and closer than the apparent reality that the earth is flat. And he goes into this for some time. Uh, let me see. I'll, I'll wrap up 
with these two paragraphs. How about this? Um, cities are designed to designate areas depending on the income of class type. The whole model is designed to segregate and prevent people colliding with different realities because of the violence of inequality. It can be if fed one of the engines to fight for what is better than equality of conditions. Anyway, I find that using all this strength power movement to prove something that is absolutely minuscule compared to a more tangible truth is a misguided effort product of the hegemonic forces. Wow, he must have used that word a whole bunch in here. Uh, you have such conviction and strength to fight for. Why not fight for a real revolution where the capital is not settled among a few that pull the strings for the poor to be poor and sick, for the poor to be ignorant, to ignore our reality, that gener gener generationally we are being poisoned in mind, body and soul by the same people, by the same hegemonic forces. The only thing we are being taught is that apathy is the chalice of bliss. Hmm. Interesting stuff. And I, I will look into that email a little bit more later, I think. Uh, but it's a little bit, little bit off topic. Uh, this one's called, Hey Mark, not a flat earther, but I had an idea. Hey Mark, my name is Bill Stone. I live in Sunbury, Ohio. I was watching the Netflix doc, and I'm sure you're being bombarded with emails and everything else. I don't do Facebook, or as one of my friends calls it, Bookface, or I would have messaged you on there. I don't know what sort of experiments you're part of. However, at the end of the documentary, a few people were trying to use a laser light over three inline points to determine if the Earth is flat or curved. Obviously, we know the elevation changes are real. We can see them and feel them. My idea is don't use... The land, use the water. I, yeah, I, and again, I'm not making fun of him. He doesn't know yet. Uh, water always lays flat aside from tide. Having three boats stay in a straight channel might give better results. The three boats need to be the same in focal mounts position to the same height on each boat. This may have been done, and if so, sorry for wasting your time, but it hasn't. I really think this would be worth exploring. I need to recognition. I, I don't know what that I, I'm not even trying to correct that one I just want people to understand the truth is stranger in fiction I love that and to question everything <sighs> couldn't have said it better myself thank you William and yes we are doing stuff over water this one's called test if I can click on it uh, let's see here Mark I used to be a member of FES however the web page seemed to go quiet I have recently been watching your videos and discovered why that being said, the reason I agree with the idea of flat earth is because of the older Bibles that would mention windows of heavens, the right, oh yeah, 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 like the book of Enoch, the writings of lost inky writings that mention the construction of this world we live in and how the sun and the moon seem to move mechanically. Yep. I am being vague about the descriptions because I am going by memory. The lost inky videos are being blocked by YouTube now. Really? That's probably a copyright thing. Uh, all that aside, I have a question for you. Are asteroids, otherworldly flying objects real? I think they are. Uh, you know, Jonathan from Jersey, uh, my old co-host from back in the day, he, he said it really quickly. I mean, almost instantly. He said, hey, yeah, it's just like throwing rocks into an aquarium. And then I took it up a notch. I said, yeah, you know, railgun speeds, use a railgun technology, use metal or, uh, metal, metal or shallow trajectory, and then uh, try not to aim at any cities. And I'm looking looking at you, whoever was aiming at that Soviet city a few years ago. And it didn't hit, of course, uh, but it was getting pretty close. And then it detonated. Moving on. This one's called, How Does the Flat Earth Model Explain Ships at Sea? Oh, it's going to be a new one. Yep, here we go. Mark, I just finished the documentary you were in with Netflix. Found it fascinating. I like how your system of belief follows Boyle's experimental observational philosophy. I am open-minded to the proof of a flat earth, but I am hung up on arguments made against it, such as the included link. How do you explain how ships disappear bottom first over the horizon as they are moving down following a curvature? Thank you very much for your time. And even more, if you do get back to me, kindest regards, John Luxford. And he sent a link. Boy, you know what? I'm going to click on this link. And I'm going to see which video he's actually pointing to. I bet you it's one of how vote. Yep. By how boats vanish over the horizon being big pier level. And that's from 2016. And it has 32,000 views. And it's, it's the reason why nobody caught this video is from a small channel uh, called empty. Thea file Delphla. Yeah, well, with a name like that, no one's going to remember it anyway. So, uh, yeah. 
Bolts Governor the Horizon, anyone knows anything in the Flat Earth community, or if you're outside the community, just type in Flat Earth Boats Over the Horizon. You will find so many videos on this. It is, is amazing. Again, uh, they're, not, they're not going whole first. Not at all. It's atmospheric lensing. Uh, the atmospheric distortion, uh, refraction, whatever you want to call it, Fata Morgana effect. It's all it is. They just go off into the distance. They get smaller and smaller until they get to be like a single pixel, and that's it. And we've got ton. I, I can't even count and begin to imagine how many hours of footage we have of this. But thank you again. He's he's new, so hey, cool. Because remember, if if you're bypassing the whole space agency thing, that's the first thing you go to, which is ships going over the horizon. And if you've got some sort of academia background, you're going to go into sticks and shadows, and then that's really it. That's that's all that's left. Moving on. Meanwhile, we have tons of points that we can bring up. This one's called Greetings from the UK. Mark, this means the flat earth to us. Thank you so much. I hope your listeners appreciate music by like-minded uh, people. Thanks again. Oh, yeah, that's from Dave. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, there's a band out in the UK called Fabric, uh, F-A-B-R-I-K, and I used one of their songs called White Star on the last license plate compilation that was, that was done. I just put out uh, a couple days ago. In fact, I think it was yesterday. Ooh, time and flat Earth and just mixes weirdly, and it's a cool song. I like it, and I I picked it even before I got to the end of the song where they had Apollo audio tracks playing in the background over the music. It was really cool. So it was you know, call it fate, but I think it was really cool, and I'm glad he asked. They called, they contacted me and said, "Hey, could you use one of our songs?" And it's like, "Yeah, absolutely, I will." And they want to use it, and want me to use like 30 seconds of it in like the end of a Strange World episode. It's like, I can do a little better than that. But I had to find a song I liked. and uh, so. But I did find one on their side. This one's called Regarding Nothing. Hi, Mark. I have a lot of questions for you. The first being, what do you believe is beyond the wall of ice? Uh, if there are any theories about it at all, and who do you think is the main person organization behind the lie? Uh, boy, those are two really different questions. Uh, first one, I believe it's an unlimited universe outside this wall of ice. Uh, uh, whatever the barriers of this thing are made of, you know, high frequency, force field, uh, heavy element, heavy metal, heavy water, whatever it is. Uh, I, but I think there's more of them also. I, I don't think this is a one-off. I, you know, if you're going to build one of these, you're probably going to build another a bunch of them. I would in multiple stages, uh, no different than plants in a greenhouse. Uh, as far as who do we think is the main person organization behind the lie? Who's been covering up? There's a bunch of or groups that are covering it up but very, very few people inside those groups. Uh, like generals, you know, over an army, they, the troop, the, the main ground troops don't know what's happening. They only know they're supposed to go here and go here and fight this. Uh, but the generals know the, the, the plans and I couldn't tell you who, who the main generals are. I mean, I'm sure you guys all have your suspicions. Uh, I'm also interested in your thoughts about other conspiracies. What would you say is your favorite apart from the flat earth? Mine is the JFK assassination second favorite conspiracy after flat earth boy that is a tough one i would have to give it some thought uh because there's so many cool little wrinkles i mean just about every american war was based on a conspiracy which the general public doesn't doesn't know about i don't like to go off the small ones you know i don't i really like to go into sandy hooker v vaccinations or stuff those are those are too easy um i don't know maybe jfk like you that that's probably my second favorite because there's so much intrigue behind it and it had a it was one of the few conspiracies that actually had a major motion picture about it. you know what since that was my first first look into conspiracies the film by oliver stone back in the early 90s that's probably the one i'm going to go with jfk and if you guys are ever curious you want to call in I'll, I'll just end it with this part this part with this which is uh jfk had to die plain and simple uh, look i put myself in the other group's shoes and jfk had to go down for various reasons and uh, it wasn't just the reasons i mean yeah they kind of laid it out in the movie jfk and if you haven't watched it by oliver stone i know it's 20 30 years old now um you really should watch it it's totally uh it, it's totally worth it it's 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 it is his opus it, it is a fantastic film they did uh finally i would like to ask you what your thoughts are on the closing part of the documentary when the experiment uh appears to show the earth is curved <laughs> see can this be trusted no it can't the power and editing um, um, that's what I'm going to say. I, I was talking about it with different flat earthers yesterday, and that's that's the easiest way to describe this between not just Jared but Bob as well. Power and editing, which is you got to remember the director. By the time he got to the end of this film, making this film, he hated flat Earth, hated it. 
Uh, and he said so as much when he did the director's commentary on the iTunes version when and the part that bugged him and bugged all of them at the same time and I, it's not the he is, this is not the first group of people that have, have come to me with this National Geographic came to me this and that guy uh, ephemeral rift on um, on YouTube also said the same thing and that's once the kids got involved once he saw kids getting involved in flat earth then he got worried then it was like oh, okay I have a responsibility to protect the children it's like whatever what what sort of knee jerk response is that what redder where did you get that from i mean seriously you know, because we're out there soliciting children come on uh, but but that's what national geographic did too and so that's why he turned the way he did on the film meaning he tweaked it to where he made bob look as bad as possible and make jaron look as bad as possible and he even took shots at me even though i didn't give him a lot of shots chris pontius there was no shots to take patricia steer not really any shots to take uh nathan thompson yeah he took a few shots so and he and he did that because he's a science based you can't be ex completely objective when you're making flat earth it's very polarizing you're either for it or you're against it and he, it started out as a human interest piece and he turned because he realized that flat earth he, in the beginning i'm sure he saw flat earth as just this interesting little harmless group this little band and then when he got to the conference he it got real it got too real for him and he had to deal with it again i have nothing against daniel personally i i enjoyed working with him and caroline and nick and the other group but uh, he he took a shot and you no, know, well, karma's a bitch. We'll see what happens to him. Anyway, uh, let's see, he says, thank you so much for replying to the cool Flat Earth University artwork. I will look forward to hearing from you again. And that's from Arlo. Cool. And you know what? I may write him back and say, I read this on a show. Otherwise, he's going to be looking for it for a long time. This one's called Nude F.E. Hi, Mark. Love the Netflix doc and the YouTube vids. Here are my questions for you. One, do you believe in the universal consciousness? We are one. Uh, yes, I do. But everything's splintered. So does it really mean anything? I mean, no. I, I mean, yes, I, I, I do believe in this. I do. But for me, it's not very relevant because everything is so fragmented at this point that uh, any sort of giant universal uh, um, unification not gonna be anytime soon what would happen if we all meditated on this more nothing no, nothing yet it's got to be it's not a meditation issue the system is going to go the way the system is going to go uh this civilization that we're in has a lifespan as all the civilizations before it we, we it's three acts in every great story we are coming up on act three now and then you know then, then this civilization has to run to a conclusion the question is it's going to be a happy ending Happy popcorn ending or a tragic award winner? You can only have one of the two. This one, uh, number two, what happens when most of the ice melts due to climate change? Uh, nothing. nothing. Nothing's going to happen there. Uh, the system can compensate for uh, water levels to a point. So it, climate change it, it isn't, the, the big worry there isn't about melting oceans or, you know, rising oceans and melting ice. Uh, the bigger question is going to be uh, erratic weather tornadoes where there shouldn't be any hurricanes where there shouldn't be any typhoons and so on and so on uh three if this is true do you have any leads on that we're also in a simulation yes yes and, and i i said this um to a guy yesterday which was i'd love to tell people that everything is a simulation because there are three huge indicators in this place that um that hint at a simulation uh, the biggest of course is the double slit experiment anybody in science I, seriously i challenge you especially if anyone in science that has done software development at all uh that's that's the big one but anyone that does software development and knows about the double slit experiment knows what we're looking at and by that i mean nothing exists unless a person is looking at it is in the area it the, unless a person a human being can observe it it doesn't exist and we build this into simulations now the stuff we're doing and we do it to save computer power plain and simple if if your character in a computer simulation doesn't get to go on the other side of that mountain you don't draw the other side of the mountain or anything beyond the mountain it's there's nothing there it's literally nothing blackness the problem is is that we see that now that's what the double experiment um double slit experiment shows is that we see this now in in, in our world 
<coughs> so, sorry, you know, the two tied together. That's that's an easy connect the dots, which is okay. If it's happening in our simulations and it's also happening in the real world, what does that mean? And if you if you're still not getting it, uh, watch the 1998 or 1999 movie Thirteenth um, Floor. That'll that'll give you the the big aha moment. But again, it is it's tough to explain to people. I don't like telling people about simulations because the average person on the street does not get it. Uh, they don't. I mean, I could talk. I could spend an hour. I, that's how long it would take. It would take me an hour to explain and beat into somebody's head the double slit experiment. And that's just one of them. Uh, you want to look up something else fun? Uh, look up the um, well, not just uh, quantum entanglement. We won't get into that. Uh, look up the um, neuroscience and free will. That's fascinating because then we're not even talking about a simulation. We're not talking about a, a virtual reality. We're talking about a virtual movie where this place has already been played out. I mean, meaning the path has already been chosen. That's, that goes into a whole part of the matrix they even talk about. All right, anyway, long story short, yes, simulation, lovely. Uh, and lastly, four, is there another Canadian conference? Cheers, Amanda. Uh, the Toronto conference was canceled, but that is not because of lack of interest, it, because, you know, it's not until the summer. Uh, it was because the, uh, the person that's putting on the conference has way too many irons in the fire. He, there's, there's way too many things happening right now in Flatter. So many that we're, everyone's stretched really thin. And so, you know, we have a conference. We just did an LA one. The next one's New Zealand. And then we've got one in um, London. I'm sorry, Birmingham. We'll just say London. UK. How's that? UK conference. And then the um, Amsterdam. And then finally in Dallas. You know, we got to get all these things done. Um, now, there may be a conference in Toronto, but the same guy that was going to do it is not going to do it. So there may be a mini conference, but I don't think it's going to be in Toronto anymore. It's probably going to be in Alberta. Don't quote me on that, but that's the rumor I have right now. I, I'm actually speaking with somebody, uh, um, some people out there that are trying to organize a mini conference in Alberta somewhere. So there you go. Thank you for that. This one's called a question from someone on the edge. Dear sir, okay, you make a compelling argument. Despite my understanding of science, physics, astronomy, and Einstein's general theory of relativ relativity, I could be persuaded the earth is flat. However, here it always is. One question disturbs. You know, I. it is one of those phrases now that I don't just take for granted. I kind of, it's like, yeah, but I have a few questions. Yeah, but I have one question. Yeah, but I have three questions. It's always question, question, question. Uh, I have seen models of the flat earth resting on a tabletop. If the earth is not a globe spinning in space, what is our actual flat earth resting on? Who knows? L uh, a lab? Is it God's footstool? Uh, that's what Rob Skiba kind of draws it at. Uh, it could be, you know, a bunch of them next to each other in a big room. I don't know. I do not know. Is it an inverted pyramid floating in space? Again, there's your problem. Why do you think, why does there have to be space? It's because you were told you were sp there was space since you were six years old. You were told again and again and again. Every day, every story that NASA releases, every constantly, NASA just puts, puts them out there. Face on Mars, something on the top of Saturn, reclassifying Pluto, got its probe going here, probe going. They're not actually doing anything. Nobody goes anywhere. But if they keep telling you we're sending things out and we're observing this and just keep mentioning space, space is the key word there. That's the drumbeat. You're in space, you're a globe. Space, globe. Oh, let's see. As the final picture in your video, Flat Earth Clues, the movie suggests. I have a movie called Flat Earth Clues, the movie. And there's a pyramid floating in space. You're going to have to link. I'm going to have to write this guy. I, I need to know what link he's going to there. Uh, because every once in a while, someone will take my audio and then put it to uh, some, some different images. But whatever. If God created the world flat, I will accept that. But what is our actual flat earth resting on? Wow, he wrote that in red. Uh, don't know. And you asked twice. I still don't know. Uh, in order to believe, I need solidity, not fantasy. Well, there you go you got to have somebody that gets out of, outside of this place to look back and tell you where we are. But I think if you get out of this place, I, look, I think it's a one-way trip. Thank you for your research and good belief in humanity. Barbara G. Louise. Okay. Next. Guide copy, please. Mark, are you afraid that could happen? When... When do you predict? Oh, you mean like the end of the world? If the world doesn't go plant-based soon, could be bad news also. Earthlings and fishless oceans by 2048. Pfft, I won't that last that long. 
A copy of this infamous guide would be great. Thanks and God bless. And that's from A. Just put the letter A. And yeah, if anyone wants the guide, of course, all you have to do is say survival guide. It's free and I will send it to you. It's just a few megs. It's in a PDF file. And hey, you know what? If it helps you, yeah, print it out though. If you're going to do it, don't, don't be a schmuck. And, uh, and just put it on your cell phone. It's like, oh, I'll read it when the lights go out. It's like, really? Because then you know, you're going to have to keep charging your phone to read the survival guide. But who knows? Maybe it'll work for you. Okay, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Last time we talked, it was 2015. Oof, wow. It took you four years to write me again? And now I'm back. I've been back to the place none dare talk about for two years on and off, working with new biomorph life forms, studying and cataloging. This provided me with the opportunity to find out more what is beyond the ice, ice wall. Okay. All right. We will finish this. Surprise, surprise. More ice. It's vast expanses beyond, way beyond, beyond it. It turns out your dome is not a full dome, but a convex roof. Uh, who wrote this? Made of complex energy fields, a shield of some description and impregnable. It appears, it's spelled appears wrong. There's no edge and the ice expands in all directions from the North Pole. And short mark, they are hide, hiding, spelled wrong. Uh, more and lots more. The temp where I was working was a nice 32 degrees, like on a summer's day in the UK, which means he's from the UK. Uh, there are cities under the ice, but we could not get access. The guards are very strict, <laughs> but also very forthcoming with info. I'm just going to treat this as a story. And they are so they are so bored, spelled wrong. This made me smile. And they are bursting to tell what they know. Now, hold on to yourself, Mark. Beyond the wall, 60 miles from New Swabia. Oh, you mean the, the German colony? Uh-huh. We found lakes teeming with life. Li li life of monstrous, spelled wrong, proportions. Uh, octopus, spelled wrong, of gigantic size, 34 feet in length and weighing from 300 to 600 pounds, approximate estimation. This is just a sample of what's out there. The Antarctic Accord, spelled wrong, is not there <laughs> to keep you out. If I was a teacher, I would destroy this thing. Uh, if there is, keep the, you know, I'm not going to finish this thing. Um, I will do my best to keep you informed. Please keep my name on the low for now. But if you would like to talk, I have no problem. I will try to Skype you this weekend. Stay safe, Mark, your friend. And I will not give you out his name. But, but I will say this. He is legitimate insane that the last time he wrote me was August of 2015. He saved that email. And he... And he, he had some, he had sort of like a summary of what we just read here. And I said, Hey, whatever you want to do, whatever you can add, let me know. And he never, he did not write back for over three years. Wow, man. I hate to tell you, but Pony Express, hell, the, the, during the revolutionary war, we had better correspondence than this. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Every day I wake up and I think nothing's going to surprise me. And it does. This one's from Adam. Hey, Mark. Oh, it's called Question. Hi, Mark. I have one question about the flat earth. I need help with. Can you explain this? And then you put a link. You don't actually give me a question. You just give me a link to a video. And the video says, oh, yeah, look at that. Johannesburg to Perth. Yep. No, I'm not going to answer that. So we've talked about many, many times, including, oh, I don't know. How about Clue 9? In the Flat Earth Clues. But thank you for that. Uh, this one's called Brewster's Millions. Mark, please send me the Coast to Coast interviews and the survival guide. Brewster had to spend 30 million in 30 days to have no assets. If he did, he would inherit 30 million. Great movie from 1985. You're the best. Stay flat, DJ. And yeah, it was a, it was a, wasn't a trivia question. I just forgot the name of the Richard Pryor movie, which was interesting, which was if you had a ridiculous amount of money, could you even begin to spend it? And uh, there was actually a movie that touched on this. And this was in the 80s. And yeah, Richard, Richard Pryor was given $30 million to spend, but he had to spend it in 30 days. And at the end of it, he had to own nothing. So, how, which is tricky. How do you buy, spend a 30 million bucks and not have anything to show for it at the end? Now, of course, nowadays it'd be like, well, but just buy $30 million worth of drugs and just give it away. I think there were some rules there involved, but, uh, but it was an interesting movie. I, one of those, again, for a comedy, it was really a kind of a think piece. Moving on, this one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. I am an enthusiast lately. I have an idea for proving the Flat Earth go to a man-made large still body of water like the Washington Monument. 
I hadn't actually thought of that. As that does not pop into my head when I hear large man-made still body of water. Uh, run a very fine light or laser across the surface of water to find the curve. Hope this helps. If so, mention. Don't have a channel yet. Been procrastinating forever, but I'll start soon just making content. That's from Craig. Thanks, Craig. That's actually not a terrible idea. Again, he's thinking. I wouldn't have thought of the Washington Monument, but yeah, that pool, that shallow pool, it's actually not not, sh not shabby. I, of course, now with all the security out there, if you even shined, uh, you know what? I don't even recommend that because if you shine a laser light anywhere near anything in the Washington D.C. area, they're probably going to look at you. They're probably going to they're going to going to be watching you. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth Newbie. Mark, I came across your videos and I was intrigued by what you had to say. I have many questions about the subject and thought I would reach out to you and see if I received a response. For example, my first thought on all of this is, where are all the satellites? Well, there's something up there. I know that. We know they are up there because we can easily Google a satellite. <laughs> oh, here we go. Because we can easily Google a satellite picture of anywhere in the world. And my car gives me GPS directions when I get lost. Yep. That's how you know there's satellites up there. Yep. There are also satellite phones that work anywhere in the world, even in the most remote locations. Not always they don't. Where traditional cell towers don't exist, don't be so sure. And again, there are things floating up there. But were they put up there by rockets? No. Uh, do you have an explanation for this? Yes, I do. And so do a whole bunch of other people. Thanks for your time. Respectfully, Darren V. Darren, and I, I don't mind if people ask me questions. I don't. But man, there's a reason why I say do your own research. Which is, look, type at least, the very least, before you email me, type it in to freaking google or youtube and just type be specific type it in and put flat earth next to it and i guarantee we, i mean we've got four years of content out there we cover every topic you can think of moving on this one's called flat earth debate hi mark are you interested in hosting a debate with me over skype or similar with on your channel we can discuss topics that are easily observable and verifiable by any layman. Oh boy. On my side, I'd like to talk about the appearance and movement of the sun and stars. No need for any maths, scientific background, or equipment. I'm comfortable with maths and science, and they can be part of the discussion if you want, but my impression is that you don't, and I don't think it would make a productive debate that is easy for viewers to understand and draw conclusions from. You're absolutely right, because the average person does not know math. Basic algebra. And again, I'm not knocking people. There's got to be a reason. More people would know, would learn this stuff if it was usable in everyday life. And it's not. When's the last time anyone thought, oh, geometry, I really need to use that or trig or calculus. Uh, anyway, uh, what I won't discuss is any speculation or anything related to history, politics or conspiracies. Well, that automatically disqualifies you. I suggest before any video debate that we go back and forth a bit via email so that we have a chance to understand each other's viewpoints and time to research proper counter arguments. What do you think are the strongest, most irrefutable arguments for Flat Earth? I watched a couple of your videos, but nothing jumped, which means he already doesn't like anything I have out at me, and they can't tell me which arguments you think are the best. I Then you're not looking hard enough. Please pick at least five points that can be explained in a short time, since they would have to be explained and debated in half in half a video debate. Looking forward to hearing from you, Alex Hall. Uh, no, Alex. Okay, first of all, you, you listed none of your qualifications whatsoever. I... Uh, if you want to debate me, hey, great. Who are you? What, what do you do? What exactly is your stance going to be? Obviously, you hate Flat Earth, which is fine, but you're just some guy. I get some guys wanting me to debate me all day long. And I did appreciate the email, but uh, no. Not going anywhere. You've got to come from a science background. And I'm, I'm not doing... Who's the guy that, that comment I heard? I'm not doing... Russian Dracula, although I can see where I would, people would think I'm slipping into that. This one's called Trucker Gerald. Hello, I called in your show last night, got this in my email. I'm guessing it's not you. Uh, yeah, if anyone wants to uh, email a flat earther uh, named Trucker Gerald, his name's Gerald Livingston, and he's looking for people in the Carolina areas, his email is Gerald, G-E-R-A-L-D, 5423 at att.net. This one's called Flight Paths. Hi, Mark. I was watching the documentary on Netflix recently. Full disclosure, I'm not a flat earther, but I was intrigued by your theory on flight paths. The thing I didn't quite get is that you seem to take a fairly analytical approach to your theories, which is great. But you speak about the absence of flight paths across the Southern Hemisphere as evidence to your theory. 
as some not evidence but suspicions I, I should probably clarify that as someone who has flown directly from here we go from buenos aires johannesburg johannesburg to perth i'm a bit confused as why you haven't seen those flights i have and you gotta watch the clues i absolutely get it when i made clue seven remember i was brand new to this i could not find a freaking non-stop flights and then people dug in and out of all the flights in the southern hemisphere i still to this day four years later staggers me that people don't aren't bothered by this more that out of all the flights in the southern hemisphere there's just a handful of non-stops it's, you gotta remember the northern hemisphere well you can do non-stop anywhere you want it's just a question of money in the southern hemisphere you can pay as much as you want you're not getting non-stops most of the time in fact i even had a um a travel a corporate travel agent from the southern hemisphere uh contact me and said look you don't know how much of a pain it is. We get complained. Uh, people complain to travel agents in the Southern Hemisphere all the time. I mean, there's capital cities which you cannot fly from point to point. Uh, you can't. I mean, ten, twelve thousand dollars doesn't make any difference. There are no flights to buy, and that shouldn't happen because there the distances on a globe are very, very short. Next one. Hi, Mark. This isn't spam. I'm a flat earther, but I, I wouldn't care. I, in fact, I've been reading more troll emails lately. Hi, Mark. My name is Michael Buckley. I tried calling you several times, so I figured I would send an email with an attached video showing what stars really are. I believe they are just small pinpoint holes in the night sky. Yeah, sure. And they allow light from an unknown source, though. The Bible would say that the source is God's unapproachable glory. I tend to believe that theory, so I did an experiment. I took an ordinary house lamp, as you will see in the video, and then placed a piece of cardboard over the lamp, making sure that it was the same diameter of the lamp. The cardboard caught fire and my house burned down. I'm blaming you. No, I, I'm totally making that part up. I also poked a few pinpoint holes in it from different sizes. The bigger the hole, the more light comes through, obviously. Representing the brighter stars we see, turn the lamp on. There you have stars explained. Now just imagine that the heavens are spinning at 15 degrees per hour and not the earth. Then you have why you see the different constellations at different times in the year. Yet the stars never move, a.k.a. Polaris. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Also call me the number. I'd love to explain this on your show sometime and I'll also explain where Amelia Earhart really vanished to. Thanks, Michael Buckley. I love how he throws that in at the end. Here's how the stars work. And by the way, I know the secret about Amelia Earhart. I mean, I actually, I, I was, me, we've been talking about Amelia for some time now, which is uh, if the, uh, the world was flat, uh, then the navigation would be off. And if you were flying a single engine plane or a double engine plane, whatever it is, if you're just flying alone and you're trying to island hop and you've got to make a certain island with the fuel requirements, you may not make it depending on where you are. And I think she ran out of fuel. I think she was like looking at her gauges, looking up going, island should be here. I should be like seeing it anytime. And I think she had to ditch somewhere. If I get my time travel machine. I will go and pay her a visit. This one's called Behind the Curve. I'm really actually really surprised more people don't have Behind the Curve in the title. Hi, Mark. Just watched the documentary. Really enjoyed it. I have to say that I really admire you and appreciate your calm and reason demeanor. I definitely support your argument. Keep up the good work. Look forward to seeing how this all spins out. Toodle Pip from Merry Old England, Tom McGuire. <laughs> Toodle Pip. That's a thing, right? Uh, this one's called Quick Word. Hi, Mark. My name is Stephanie. I just want to tell you that this all started for me with Netflix. Well, then you've only been in it two weeks. I was looking for something to watch, came across the Flat Earth documentary with you, and that's what started me to look for you on YouTube and start watching your videos as far as the introduction to Flat Earth, which I had questions about Flat Earth before I saw you, so it was not something I'd ever heard of. Now, I must tell you, I'm Jewish and was never really religious but recently started reading the bible and the thing i didn't get was when god said he separated the waters above and the waters below and that had me on a quest to figure it out you sound extremely intelligent i don't know about that and very convincing last night i said to my husband oh boy don't don't do it have you ever thought about the flat earth theory and he looked at me funny but he is open-minded now i can hear him in the other room watching your videos i'm still a little on the fence but i think in the back of my mind, I know you're right. I don't believe a word the government says or NASA or anyone in charge because they all lie. I know that. Anyway, I just wanted to thank you for trying to open my eyes of all the sleeping people. If you could just answer one extremely stupid question for me. Well, 
Amazing. Since the first week. What about asteroids? And you know what? I, I, there were so many questions about freaking asteroids. I probably should have put it in the clues, but I, I, you know, I couldn't cover everything, obviously. Do you think they're man-made? Uh, yeah, I do. Just to throw us off track because how could they get through the firmament? Absolutely right. Uh, you can answer me whenever you get a chance, and I hope you don't mind if I bother you again with any stupid questions I may come across. That's from Stephanie. And she's from New York, originally. This one's called Flat Earth. Dear Mark, I've been watching your videos and I saw your documentary on Netflix and all I have to say is, wow, I have so many questions. My whole life, I've been taught to believe that the Earth is round. I was just given math and believe what teachers told me. I want to know more about the truth. One of the hardest things for me to get past is the Arctic Ring. I'm having trouble understanding how it works and I would appreciate if you could explain. <clears throat> Help me understand and show me the truth. Sincerely, an open mind, Nathan. Okay, this one's called this this one's called flat earth brazil hi mark my name is arian time junior tm tm junior and i want to get right to the point my brother samuel matthias tem started in 2015 the flat earth movement in brazil the same year you started you doing your, your youtube videos i just saw today the documentary on netflix on flat earth and after watching it the first thing that came to my mind was this guy needs to talk with samuel why my brother's burned out got tired and needs help too many people started coming after him and he just couldn't take it. In 2017, he fell into a depression and sold for bananas his Facebook page with nearly 98,000 followers. Uh, and his Facebook page was called a Terra, Terra Plana, A-T-E-R-R-A-E-P-L-A-N-A. -A -A. Uh, I'm going to skip past a lot of the stuff. There's, it's just a big, big email. And then we get to the end. He is a deeply Bible based flat earther like myself. And since 2017, he's off the grid, nearly living in poverty, doing only one thing, studying the Bible in its purest form, going into the root of it all has gone beyond flat earth to new discoveries. Pfft, tell me what those are. Uh, he still has an email. He also speaks English fluently. Please try to talk with him. Let him know that he is not alone. Uh, it would be just awesome if you guys could help him also. Uh, go to this year's Flat Earth International Conference. Mm, which one would that be? The one in England? The one in Amsterdam? The one in the US? Maybe one in Canada? Which one? Thank you and God bless you. Sincerely, Arian. All right. I will reach out to him and see what I can do. I, I don't say I, I'm a little surprised he didn't reach out to other people, though. Uh, this one's called Answers in Genesis Article. Mark, in response to the booklets I've written, a couple of you sent me a link from either Answers in Genesis or Creation Ministries International. Uh, the article was titled In the Firmament, a Solid Dome. If you haven't read it, I would encourage you to read it before visiting the video rebuttal I uploaded on YouTube. Read the AIG article first so you can absorb JP Holdings' arguments against the firmament being a dome over the earth. The video is all text, a bit more than 20 minutes long. Comments on the video are allowed, but of course, you can always comment via email privately if you would like. And that's from David Tutwiler. All right. And he also quotes Psalms 19.21, or I'm sorry, 19.1, which I like. Uh, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork. Huh. All right. This one's called New Clip of the ISS. Is it fake or real? Oops, not the ISS, but a UFO. <laughs> uh, Skywatcher recorded ISS passing, and that's on, oh, what, UFO sighting hots, hotspot.blogspot? Come on. Gotta give me a little more, something a little more mainstream than that. This one's called Watch. Mark Sargent talks about several of his Flat Earth Clues on YouTube. Mark, I haven't found this interview on your Flat Earth Clues interview videos. This interview from Connie from Coast to Coast. Yeah, Connie didn't want me to put it on my channel. Coast to Coast is usually picky about that stuff. And it's one of the few... They actually caught, threw me a strike just for even putting a promo on my channel because they thought I put up the whole thing and I didn't. I said, look, it's a 50-second promo. You get a new intern. Uh, but it's on um, Connie's channel. It's called Blue Rock Talk with Connie Willis. Uh, and it's Mark Sargent talks about several of his flat earth clues. And that was back in December of 2017. Moving on. Yeah. So that's, yeah, it's not on my channel because, um, uh, even though it was a coast to coast thing, because I didn't want to risk it. She asked me not to. So it's like, okay. And even honestly, even if she gave me permission, I'd probably be a little leery anyway. Uh, because every once in a while, People will do that and they think they've got the rights to put it up and they don't. 
Uh, this one's called, Want to Go to Space, Mark? Hi, Mark. I've been watching some of your videos. I started a GoFundMe page for $35 million to send you into orbit so you can verify once and for all who is correct. We would live stream your entire journey from launch to land, notwithstanding any technical limitations. This is something you would like to do and be willing to do. Of course, and that's from Richard Scott. Of course I would do it, but it's never, ever going to happen. They would never let me go up there. Mostly because they have no leverage against me. It's different. You know, I, I've never m been married and never had kids. Uh, and uh, I don't even have any nieces or nephews. There's there's almost nothing they could use. And mom's got cancer. Uh, there's there's n What are you going to use against me? My sister? <laughs> Good luck with that. I'd be like, <laughs> threaten my sister. Uh, yeah, see, see how I react with that. Uh, so no, they're, they're not, they're never going to put me in a rocket because I would never sign the disclosure agreements saying that, uh, I would not say, plus they're never going to put me on a rocket. No astronauts go on the top of rockets. That's the whole point. They would just sit me in a room and say, okay, we want you to go against flat earth, but yeah, come on, let's face it guys. If I went against flat earth right now, nobody would even believe me. They would think I was compromised in like two seconds. It would be the Joe Rogan times a lot. Remember, remember Joe Rogan was against NASA for a while. You know, he spoke out against NASA and uh, was very enthusiastic, a lot, had a lot of conviction. And then all of a sudden he stops talking about any of that stuff for a year. And then he gets a show on Sci-Fi sci Channel for a one season. And in the first episode, he recants everything he ever said bad about NASA. What does that sound like to you? If I did something like that after 14, 1500 Flat Earth videos, if I went against Flat Earth, it would be, people wouldn't, I would literally, people would just come straight at me and say, oh yeah, well they got to you. So this one's called Flat Earthers Accidentally Prove Earth is Round in Netflix Documentary. It's on Metro News. Here we go again, Mark. Kind regards, Adam from the UK. Yep, I know. Yep. And the science, the heavy science people, that's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to look at the documentary. And, and luckily for us, um, most people, again, the power of editing, which we talked about earlier, but uh, luckily for us, they... Um, uh, the, the gyro experiment, the average person on the street wouldn't have no idea what that means. Even explaining a gyro to them, they wouldn't know what it means. And of course, the laser experiment, they're not going to know what that means either. And honestly, I watched this in every audience I sat in, which was when they got to Jaron's experiment. Yeah, the way they edited it was, you know, they said, oh, you know, they implied that something went bad, but they didn't say what it was. And nobody in the audience knew what it was. So anyway. This one's called Speaking Opportunity at a High School. Ooh, how fun. Let's see. Hi, I'm a high school student at, uh, I'm not going to name the high school right now, just in case of trolls, in Winnetka, Illinois, north of Chicago. I'm part of a club called Out of the Box, where we regularly take in interesting speakers with different views and ideas about the world. Buddhist monks, pagan dragon lords, <laughs> dragon lords, Scientologists, and many other different speakers have been here to talk to us out throughout the years. Some of our us recently watched the Netflix documentary Behind the Curve. Thought it would be interesting to have a flat earther. Is that the appropriate term? Come talk to us to hear about it uh, from another perspective, not just what the media says about the movement. What I'm wondering is, is there any possibility for you to come speak? Or if you know anybody else who is a good speaker that would uh, come talk to us about the whole movement. And that's from David. And yeah. Absolutely, I will. Uh, I've had uh, three or four uh, high schools that have contacted me since that documentary came out. And, and this one in particular wants to, and I've, I've emailed them since. This was sent a few days ago. And they want to fly me out for this. And I said, look, before you do that, talk to your administration and show them the documentary if you want. And uh, hopefully they will you know, be on the same page that you are. But yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to, uh, to talk to any group. I don't care who they are. Because as you know, Flat Earth doesn't discriminate against gender or age or race or religious preference and there's another one from trucker gerald which means people are already emailing him super great this one's called the moon mark i try to tear down the globe model rather than prove the fe yeah that's what i do i apologize for not having a slick animated model to accompany this inquiry it occurred to me this morning as i observed i'm waking up earlier and earlier as the sun rises earlier not the first time this idea occurred mind you but this realization hit me like a ton of bricks this morning as my thoughts jumped immediately to the moon please stick with me through my thought process included below starting from the globe review would you agree that the on the global model the earth rotates 
around on its own axis and constant speed daily, 24 hour roto rotation. Yeah, if the, that's what they say about the globe model. Me, then why don't we have equal day and night every single day, 12 hours of light and 12 hours of dark? Globa responds, the earth is tilted 23.5 degrees and orbits the sun in an ellipse. Me, I propose the length of the day would still be equal regardless of tilt or ellipse. A persistently spinning ball would have any single mercator line crossed at the exact time consistently on a 24 hour rotation. I'm not talking high noon here. I'm talking at any position. The sun should appear at the horizon at the same time every day because of the 24 hour rotation. Glober, but the tilt, me. Does the tilt explain why we have nine hours of daylight in the winter and 15 hours of daylight in the summer? From personal observation, uh, this is a six hour swing on a perfectly 24 hour rotation. Uh, man, do I need to have this modeled, yes. But back to my thoughts on the moon. Glober model, the Earth rotates on its own axis daily. The moon also rotates around the Earth with the center of the Earth as its axis at the precise same rate being tidally locked, they say. Me, maybe I'm missing this, but after years of the research, I have not come across this simple thing yet. The face of the moon is lit for 24 hours of full light one day per month. Everyone on Earth sees it as it occurs. The moon is fully lit for a whole 24-hour period, even though it should be matching our axis rotation. To think about this easier, include the days before and after a truly full moon. This could actually be counted as the moon's face being lit 72 hours. The moon is under full sunlight for nearly three full days, where it should be under a 12-hour sun sunlight cycle like the earth try to look at this from an astrological motion globers would use rather than the perspective of earth's surface the full moon does not jive with the glober model at all hope this was easier to read than talking to you off the air during one of your broadcasts i just need to get this thought out there this thing would not fit into a chat window <laughs> yeah it wouldn't uh and that's from bruce yeah like again I, when people do this i, I love where their head's at they're they're putting their mind out into places where normal people wouldn't and i respect it this one's called let's see here oh and a speaking opportunity at a high school i'm going to see if it's possible to gather some funds pay for a ticket back and forth um seems to be a lot of interest in having you come speak here from the student side but it might be harder to convince the administration i'll let you know how it plays out yep Yep. In those cases, I just wait, you know, until the ticket's paid. I, I, I mean, I take it fairly seriously, and I'd, I'd love the fact that to talk to them. In fact, there's uh, other high schools, which we won't get to today, which are in the list, uh, that I am going to be speaking with. Most of them are by Skype. Um, in fact, there's one down in Seattle that I suppose I could drive down to, but I'd rather, uh, it'd probably be easier for them to Skype me than to go on campus. Uh, this one's called In Search Of. Hello there, Mark. I'm typing this through talk and text. Ooh, neat. So please forgive words that I misspeak. Since you are a man who can reach hundreds of pe people, I'm curious if you could help me shine some light on a couple of topics that have me puzzled. I'm sure you get thousands and thousands of emails. Let's try to keep this quick to the point. So the first topic I'm curious about is encyclopedias prior to 1958. It seems a while back that I saw a YouTube video where a girl had a 1958 encyclopedia that was prior to the treaty and it explained that at some longitude and some latitude configuration, there was a firmament above the land. I'm really anxious to start a library of encyclopedias prior to 1958, or at least just have some people screenshot and post with their encyclopedia, say, about Antarctica. The second topic that has me puzzled is August Picard. Why don't we have more information about this man's studies? I have copies of his journey, 10 to 14 miles over the earth from 1930s popular mechanics or popular science. I forget which publication it was in. In the article, it says that he saw the earth as a flat disk and turned up edges. And now his grandson states in Wikipedia. Yeah, that's right. They changed wiki just recently uh, that his grandfather was the first to note the curvature of the earth. Yeah, they pulled it out of wiki uh, in 2018. They changed it because we were referencing it so much that they change, even though you can go look in the popular mechanics or popular science and read the article where he says absolutely that it seems flat with an upturned edge. Uh, but now it's not in wiki anymore. How sad that it is a few words can change the outlook of history. Yep, absolutely right. I'm just hopeful that maybe you can reach out to our flat earth brothers and sisters with hopes of a response with more elaborate information. Thank you so much for your time. Have a pleasant day. That's from Zana. I don't think Zana is a real name, but maybe. I've never heard, I've never met a Xana before. Okay, how many more can we do? A few more? A few more. Uh, this one's called FYI. Hi, Mark, please read. All right, I'm going to click view. And it goes into a discussion between, wow, it's quite a big chat discussion between Matt Byman and 
Ian Harrison. They're arguing on some chat board and he pasted the whole thing. And I did read it. Uh, I'm not going to read it here because it goes into a lot of, a lot of tech, but it's good. It's good. Thank you for that. I'm just acknowledging that I, I got your um, screenshots of your forum posts or wherever this was in. So thank you for that. This one's called, Are UFOs Real? Mark, interstellar or interdimensional? Uh, interdimensional. Could this phenom be part, phenom, phenom, phenom be a part of the Project Blue Beam agenda? I doubt it. Is it obvious that these observed crafts and anomalies are once again not what we're being told? Remember, they will only air on mainstream media what they want us to see and believe. And that's from, oh, and Richie from Boston, shout out to him. That's from Todd. Uh, yeah, cool. I'm And again, I'm, you know, UFOs are just part of the system. Uh, but the Flat Earth is the system, so, but thank you for that. This one's called Five Questions, Please. Hi, Mark, thank you for passing on to Patricia the message that said I had sent her two replies on Messenger to questions she had asked. I don't think she has seen them. Would you please send me the five science questions to me? Thank you. I'll buy you a beer when I see you in Auckland, New Zealand. Best regards, John Bailey from Flat Earth, New Zealand. Yeah, as you guys know, I'm going to be doing the Flat Earth, New Zealand conference at the end of April. I better get my tickets here pretty quick. That is going to be a fun trip. This one's called, The Earth is Not Flat. I am going to say this only once. I'm not going to get into some crackpot debate with you. Earth is not flat. It is round and hollow. <laughs> Hashtag, Flat Earth Sinks, Hollow Earth Rules. Mm -hmm. And that's from Clint. Thank you, Clint. This one's called, No Subject. Hello, Mark. If you are really believing that the world is flat and you want to educate everyone on the matter, the simplest way is for you or any believers to go to the edge. Take pictures. Live there. Inv live there? Invite others to join you, maybe. So simple, yet you have not done it. Why? Because you can't. Period. Please, please, please tell why you haven't done this. It would prove your theory from one guy to another. Wake up, dude. The round earth believers have proved their side. Prove yours. Go to the edge. Please, looking forward to hearing why you haven't or can't go to the edge. Sincerely, Jim. Nice. Yep. Please look into the Antarctic Treaty. Oh, please. This one's called, you know what, let's end on this one. Uh, Beyond Reality Radio. You know what, let's end on, we'll end on this one. Hello, Patricia and Mark. Uh, Jason and JV have asked me to reach out to you both about returning to Beyond Reality Radio. They recently watched the documentary Behind the Curve on Netflix and were interested in having you both back on to discuss. And that's from Eddie Edwards, a producer in New York for Beyond Reality Radio, which we have already scheduled and we are going to do. So there you have it. Thanks to everybody uh, that shot me an email. And again, I will keep doing these until as long as I have time to do these emails, I will. So please do send more. Uh, I don't care if you're a troll or not. Uh, you can send it to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.